Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dee Reinhardt with Illinois WorkNet, and we've got a few brave souls who have gotten onto the call today, but no worries because we are recording and we will uh, send this out for you. I am going to mute everybody that's on the call. Hi, Krishina. Make sure that you uh, log in for me. Well, never mind. I've got it. And um, so we're going to get rolling here right away. Uh, dashboard numbers. I sent out an email to everybody on Monday with the numbers of people and things that needed to be repaired. And I want to thank those of you who got them taken care of right away. I appreciate your uh, rapid response on that. I do know that uh, Springfield Urban League has a number of 2151As that are due by tomorrow, and I've been on the phone with Larry from down there. So if, um, if you've got some numbers in any of these columns, and the SNAP eligible is going to be changing off and on because uh, Deidre's team from DHS is working on uh, checking everybody. And we have noticed a few uh, wrong uh, markings by the staff in Deidre's office. So if you know of a customer who is actually receiving uh, SNAP benefits, but has been marked as ineligible, please send me an email and we'll get uh, Deidre and her team to check with the local office and get that, uh, get that fixed. One of the things that we are working on is the yellow rows. We need to keep those yellow rows as clean as possible. And on Mondays, I'm going to try to get emails out to everybody or phone calls out to people that might have a little bit more than they should have just so that we can keep this dashboard cleaned up we need to have everything clear for the rows that you're responsible for by the end of february and the rows that i have up in this list are the ones that you're actually responsible for uh, let's make sure that if we have anybody marked as minimal progress or no progress that you are doing the conciliation as required and then get them marked uh, as soon as possible uh, for the other way. If you have any customers in the application not started row or the 2151 past due row or possibly the enrollment required, what we're going to be doing with those right now is uh, this process right here where the application not started appointment has passed the same process here We are going to either do a no contact If the customer did not show up after their initial appointment and Or a referral rejected just so that DHS can get them reassigned and that they are out of our rows for enrollment being required so make sure that if you've got anybody in those top three sets of rows for the enrollment section and the application section, um, we also need a case note that reflects that the customer showed for their initial appointment but did not return after, the, after that initial appointment uh, so that everybody knows what's going on. If you are having any problems with those, please call me and if you call me you can give me the name over the phone and if you're emailing me use that uh, number um yes you are doing 2151 a's for february and then you will be doing a last one in march so eric you'll you'll have to do two more for those customers work experience if you have any customers that um, have done work experience, you do need to get those payrolls uploaded. Those are going to be verified by Tammy. She, uh, she'll admit that she fell off the wagon on those, but she will get those checked and they need to match 
the line item where, Tammy, they need to match the line item on the GRS. Is that correct? Yeah, your paid work experience. So, you know, when you're looking at your um, cost and your paid work experience and once you're looking at what's been uploaded in um, the system, the WorkNet system, um, the only difference should be the workman's comp and the employer portion of FICA um, would be the difference. So the GRS will be more than what's reported in um, WorkNet, but they should be relatively close if you look at the total expenditures. All right, our next section here is TABE and other assessments and then credentials. TABE scores should be added under the other assessments section. And I've been going over all of this with everybody when I make my visits. There is a YouTube video in the partner resources to show you how to do that. We need customers to demonstrate a stackable credential. And if you're having a challenge with the actual naming of the credentials, we do have, um, we do have the uh, credential engine that can be used for that. Uh, somebody just logged in to the webinar. I'm going to mute you, but if you can put in who, uh, what agency you're with, I would appreciate it into the chat pod. Um, one of the things that we are doing, and this really doesn't have anything to do with you guys, but it does reflect in. DHS what you have accomplished with the customers and DHS asked for an education attainment report that's one of the reasons why we had everybody do the tape and make sure that we're adding all the credentials and getting all of the steps added that we um, that we need done uh, DHS has to have this done has to have these edu education attainment reports uploaded into IES by the end of February. We've been asking you to do these TAVE and other credentials um, for at least six months. So I need them done by, month, by Friday. By Friday, I need them done. So that DHS can get those uploaded as well. Um, Eric is saying, we just got some of our NCCER credentials in and we are expecting others by the end of February. How long do we have? You have uh, um, until, what, Tammy, the middle of March to get credentials uploaded? Yeah, you'll need to, your grant obviously is ending in February, so we need to make sure that everything is uploaded um, in March. Um, I guess one of the things that you know we'll have to make sure that we let DHS know is that there could potentially be other credentials earned, um, you know, once they run those reports, because I know Juanita's um, in charge of that with DHS, and, and the, they're asking their DHS offices to have those uploaded by the end of February in their IES system. So, like I said, we'll just have to make sure that they're aware. Um, I don't know if there's a way that we could check um, D um, um, credentials that are added after, at, you know, after a specific time or not. Well, so one of the things is you will be able to see that an education attainment report has been created by DHS because it shows up on the progress page. So if you're making changes to credentials and education after you see that that education attainment report has been generated, you will need to, out of courtesy, contact your local DHS office and tell them that you have added some more education and that they need to rerun that report. That's, I think that would just be a courtesy between you and the office for them because they won't know to come back to run that report again. Yeah, and I think that's a great idea. Plus, you know, you want to make sure you're getting credit for everything you guys are obtaining. So, you know, we want to make sure that that's um, reported in their documents on their IES system. So it looks like you said Leslie Savage has already run the reports. So yeah, just communicate with her. All right, okay, uh, data review visits. I'm almost done. I have uh, one more to do on Monday with an agency. And as we're going through, we're looking at all of these uh, pieces and parts to make sure that your customers are reporting appropriately and that you'll get paid for everybody that you should be getting paid for. 
if if during my visits or during Olivia's visits, there were some customers that needed to be followed up on, we will be following back up on those. So please make sure that you get those things done as soon as possible. Um, we've got an, another piece coming up here in a minute that we're gonna talk about. Um, Tammy, do you wanna talk about the modifications? Yeah, um, I, I've had a couple agencies um, kind of reach out to me. Uh, they haven't gotten back to me yet if they need mods. We do have one that did a modification, which is just a line item shift, and that one's going through right now. Um, but the thing, and, and the, the second sentence there, D, it says, you can, um, you have, we have up to 10% flex on all line items but admin. But if you're going to exceed that flex, then you would have to consider a modification. So, And we are getting in the 11th hour right now, so if there's any modifications that need to be done, they meet, need to be done right away. Um, can you come under on admin? I mean, yeah, you can underexpend on any of your, I'm looking at Eric's, on any of your line items, and that's not necessarily going to be an issue. Um, we have an issue with underexpending this grant regardless. We're going to have quite a bit of money that's um, not going to be utilized just because of the nature of this program and the, the, un, you know, the amount of people that did not engage. Um, so we are, you know, there is money that we will be re refunding back to DHS or not refunding. We, we never received it. We do this on a reimbursement basis. Um, but if there, yeah, if there is, um, a need for a modification, you need to get with me right away, um, to discuss this and, and we can, we can decide if it's feasible to do that or not. Um, but there is a 10% flex on all line items except for administration. So if you expend over you can use that flex but if it goes over the 10 percent then we need to have a conversation and we need to do that soon because i mean within the next week or two we're going to be out of, really out of time to do any modifications um kelsey wants to know if she can have that money <laughs> yeah. i wish we all could right <laughs> and eric yeah, wants I know. to know if, if he if you need him to spend some money I need him to spend some money. You know, like I said, we're kind of getting in the 11th hour right now. So I think the big thing is, is that we're finishing up all of our customers that we can finish up. Um, and that, you know, we're just, you know, doing the best job that we can to finish this out. But I, I don't think we're going to have a whole lot of time to spend a whole lot of more money, unfortunately. I wish we had another year. <laughs> if we did, then we'd probably be good. With yeah. all of our lessons learned, I think that we could really, um, do a bang up job, you know, if we had, you know, some more time and, but, you know, I'm excited for what we've done and I think it's definitely guided us on, you know, future projects, um, on things to think about. Oh, Kelsey's just, being you know, selfish. She just wants the money, not for the project. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Tammy is planning an in-person meeting on February 22nd. So, uh, we're going to have, um, a few speakers and then if there's any issues that we need to uh, do in person if you want to bring a laptop with you we can uh, work on any issues right then and there um, but we'll get you details hopefully by the end of the week we'll have those wrapped up and can get those out um, to you it will be in Chicago Tammy yes Yes, and um, we probably will look at maybe a nine o'clock start, nine to three. I'm anticipating. Um, and then, if you guys have any specific topics you want you want us to bring up, um, let us know if there's you know some things that you wish that we could cover. Um, there are some you know some people I'm trying to have come in that are from the. Um, some of you guys are real providers and are familiar with the system, but for those that are not. Um, some information on the actual WIOA system, some information on just the regular Snap ENT, and then um, we, there's a Snap to Success that Dan Lyons-Smith, who is with DHS, runs. So there's some individuals that we want to bring in so that you have some exposure to potentially continuing relationships in different capacities. Um, so, but like I said, if you guys got some ideas or something you'd like to see brought to this meeting, please let us know. And then, um, if you logged in and I haven't caught you in the chat, uh, please type in who you are and where you're from. I got Autumn and I got Krishina, but I don't know if I got everybody else. Um, performance and benchmark attainment. Uh, Tammy 
we'll be forwarding a performance report along with a list of customers who are reflected in a benchmark report. I've created this list for almost everybody, but I will be compiling a list for everyone that will come out with that uh, report. And based on the benchmark areas, we have assessed and or accepted by CBO. We also have um, Virgil, I don't know about hotel arrangements. Um, Tammy, put that on your list of things. You bet. I can take care of that. And then, um, and then enrolled in training, they have to have one of these pieces here. Completed training, they have to have one of these pieces here. And then for employed, they have to be at least 30 plus hours. Customers who are employed for 30 minus hours or less than 30 hours do not count for anything. And then for retained, they have to be, have been employed for 90 days or if it was non-consecutive 180 days at 30 plus hours uh, a, um, a week. Then we get bonus. Uh, if you have a person who got a credential during their training, if they were employed in their training area, or if they enrolled in additional training. So that answers Eric's question about the post-secondary education. Um, what are we doing with the military? If they enlist, Tammy, are they getting the same uh, bonus that for the additional training? Yeah, it could be counted as additional training. <laughs> okay. <coughs> and <coughs> Kelsey is asking, is bonus more paying and how much is that? So do you want to explain that? And I'll scroll down here to the image. So many of you so, have probably seen this. Yeah, so um, an example is, let me get it down here so I can actually tell you what the, the calculations are. Um, the enrolled in higher level training, you get the same um, um, percentage as you would if they were employed. So that's based upon, you know, what the percentage is based upon um, in their, if they were considered to be employed. So that's 20%. Um, yeah, it is, yeah, the employed is 20%, correct. Um, so employed in a career pathway, that is based upon 20, 25% of the average cost. And then the same way with the credentials earned is 25%. We were pretty, like I said, generous in this. Um, this doing a uh, performance-based uh, um, contract, basically, with this project was pretty difficult just because of the nature of this project and you guys not having control on the intake. So there has been changes as we've gone along, like we pulled 25% out. Um, that's not based upon performance and that's before just implementation of the grant. And then we provided these additional incentives um, based upon, you know, those three, those three criteria. So, and then assess, um, you know, we gave that a 30% of the total grant amount. It's the, it's the maximum you can use in the assess part of it. Um, you know, there's a few of you guys that are, are still a little bit short of your total, earning your total grant. A lot of you have earned it. Um, but like I said, once again, we want you to continue to, you know, to perform. Um, I, one of the things I do want to explain also, so when you're looking at this report, we have performance based on current enrollment, and you see enrolled is zero right now. Um, this is all based upon the number of people that you've actually enrolled in the program, and it's based upon a fallout. So at the, at the top of the, this, uh, we have your performance measures in the, what's in the grant agreement. And um, you guys identify how many is going to be enrolled, how many complete, how many employed, and how many retained. And so we took that, we have, had a fallout, basically. So if you had, um, you know, 50 people enrolled and then 40 people complete, we take that percentage of fallout, you know, between complete and enrolled from employed, um, from enrolled to employed and enrolled to retained and, and attributed a percentage to that. So then when you go down and you look at your performance basis on current enrollment, your current enrollment would be whatever's enrolled. And then anything below that would be based upon the percentage rate of the fallout. 
um, of your plan numbers. So in some cases, you know, like I said, if you had 75, but then you really only received, you know, 30 people that were actually enrolled because they were referred to you, then um, that that percentage breakout would be based upon the 30 enrolled, which would, you know, then calculate your complete employed and retained numbers down below. Um, so, and if you want to go in and put in 30 under the total served under enrolled D um, in the yellow section, and the yellow sections are the only sections that you guys can complete on this. And so you see this provides a calculation. So you have 30, 10, 8, and 6, and it's the same fallout from the 75, 25, 20, and 15. Um, and the reason, like I said, once again, is because, you know, we didn't control, you don't control your front part, your intake part, especially in the beginning, it was controlled by what was sent to you guys. So, and then the, the assessed is, you know, just what the assessed is, you know, so that is based upon 30%. You actually need a grand amount in there for this all to calculate, but based upon that. So what, but the one thing I wanted to um, explain to you guys is the performance based on current enrollment. That is um, the number that you've achieved. You're always going to have 100% on the enrolled because that's based upon the number enrolled. Now, when you get down to the completion, it's based upon the number um, of the 10. You know, if you had five, then you, you've met 50% of your completion in that. Um, it's based upon whatever your actual numbers are in that yellow section there. And then it also takes a look at what you planned on doing at the top. So you had 75 originally that you planned on serving in, in enrollment, and you have 30, so you're at 40% of your plan. Um, based upon your enrollment numbers at the top. So it just gives you an idea of, you know, based upon your actual numbers and the actual number that you you enrolled in it um, and your your production on, based upon that compared to where your plan was up above. So hopefully that's not too terribly confusing. Um, I just wanted to give you, you know, the idea of, you know, and there, there are people just like what, what Dee did. There's some people that have, have blown it out of the park with their, their numbers based upon their actual and they may be a, a pretty darn close to the plan. Um, but you know, they've they've done, you know, very well with their 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 actual numbers based upon the fallout. Does anybody have any questions on this? It is a little confusing, I know. I want you to explain why there's those negative numbers in this earned assessed potential performance earnings. Well that's because that's over earnings. So I mean that is actually they've earned over um, the because amount the 17 is higher than the 10 yes okay yes so you don't don't get freaked out on those those that's just you've, you've, you've uh, based upon the 17 if you multiply that by the 1712 um, you know that's the over earnings is what that is but you cannot earn over the grant amount so I mean you've, you know we've had agencies that were referred a lot more than they planned on but they were able to serve them um, with their budget um, and and so you can't obviously charge more than what was actually what's in your grant. But what that helps with is it drops that average cost per. So you know when we're evaluating this at the end, you know some people may have come in with like an, this is in particular case an eight thousand average cost per, where you know maybe that would drop that to more like a six thousand. So it's going to give us some good you know evaluation on that too to see you know what the costs were based upon the number served. And the other things we're going to be looking at, and this is one of the reasons we kept messing with the performance, is because, you know, um, I think this was kind of restricted you guys to some degree. So we didn't want you guys to feel like you couldn't do paid work experience, which was a key, key component of this. And it was really underutilized. I think we, I think we could have done more with that. But we didn't want you to not offer those types of services to the customers because you're worried about, you know, your earnings through the performance side of it. All right, Carmen asked a question. Are we able to earn more than we have expended or do we only get up to the amount expended? The amount expended. So it's, you may, if you earn more, it doesn't mean that you, there's no revenue on this. There's no, there is no like earnings, I would say. You, it's based upon um, your actual books. So your costs related to the program and they have to be, you know, documented obviously in trial balance. They have to be real attributed cost to this program and then Eric said shouldn't the funds available to earn based on performance exclude the implementation funds total um, no they don't so and actually this is why it's pretty lenient for you guys because the funds earned based upon performance is still part of that eight thousand five hundred and sixty dollars 
average cost per. Um, so, because if we if we excluded it, then that would just bring the average cost down, and it would just it 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 would make it. I mean, we, in that particular case, it didn't make much sense to give give you that because then we would have just reduced um, the funds available in your earnings side of it too. So. So once again, like I said, we, the reason we were doing this is to make sure that you guys were utilizing the funds for the customers and you weren't, you know, shorting them because you're worried about performance. And, you know, this pot, this is not the model that I would use if, you know, on a real program. We would, you know, if we had, um, if we were doing this and the upfront side was a little bit more structured to the, the point where you guys controlled that more and you controlled who you got and you controlled who you served. Um, this model would be look a lot different. It'd look more like what the JTED model is, where we would have the plan performance identified up front, instead of using the uh, using the numbers based upon what you guys received. Oh, right. that makes sense. So then, Eric is also saying so available for allowable expenditures equals implementation funds plus career pathway incentive plus funds available based on performance. Correct, but that may add up more than your grant amount. So if it goes adds up to your grant amount, then available funds for allowable expenditures cannot exceed the six thousand six hundred and forty-two thousand. So if you added that up and it's over the grant amount, you can you still only receive that grant amount. So tell us what this line over here, available for allowable expenditures, means compared to. Okay, so that is the, like Eric said, the implementation funds, 160, plus the career pathway funds, plus the funds available based upon performance. And then the funds available to be earned based on performance, this is still earnings, so if you continue your performance, you can still earn additional funds um, based upon performance. You can still earn additional funds based upon your career pathway incentives too. So based upon this calculation right now, um, you, there's $642,000 in the grant. Earnings has been 535856 So you can still earn up to your grant amount, either through the career pathway incentives or through the performance. All right. So then you can't make more money than you've expended. You cannot, right. If you, you're, when you're closing out, the grant you're closing it out based upon your expenditures now what we will look at is if an example would be if your expenditures are six hundred and fifty four thousand dollars based upon your trial balance um, but you've only earned five hundred and thirty five thousand then then that's the disconnect right there because there could be disallowed costs based upon that because you didn't earn your grant amount and if you're coming in saying I spent all my money, but I only earned, you know, five hundred thirty-five thousand dollars, then that, there's a disconnect with that. Okay. And we have a few agencies in that situation, or not? There's a few. Okay. Yeah, they're they're all really close, but there are there's a couple, a handful, probably not even a handful. There is a few. All right. But once again, like I said, and some of this could be just because it, the information isn't documented. So if you if you guys are documenting your credentials, documenting your employment, you know, and there's going to be some um, agencies that haven't documented the fact that they're going on to hire, you know, to training and a different program too. And the, so and as that's question, all documented, that changes. Kelsey had a question that said higher level training equals college or WIOA. Yeah, it can be WIOA. If they're enrolled in a WIOA program, and we talked about this, I think, in the last one to document that. So if you if you if they're going on to higher education, if you're enrolling them in WIOA, they're in WIOA, to make sure you document that, and you're going to mark them as entered higher level education, uh, because they're continuing on, but they're continuing on through another funding source. Um, if you know if they're going to, you know, college through a Pell Grant, you know, or if you got you have some other resources where they're continuing on their education, then you document that and identify that they're continuing education, higher level education. All right, um, okay, I don't see any other questions. I've got, um, 
Tammy, is there anything else here that somebody needs to know that we're that we've missed? You know, not that I can think of. Just like I said, is you know, Dee and um, Olivia both have been out working hard with you guys to make sure that everything in the the data is good and and validating it because, you know, that's what our evaluation team is going to be using to look at this. Um, we are going to do a, a one data um, match with IDES probably the first part of March. Um, to take a look at the entire treatment group and see, you know, where they're at. Um, so, you know, because that's another thing that our evaluation group is looking at. They're going directly to, like, you know, the wage data systems, and they're going to be looking at DHS's systems to see if these customers have come back on. Um, so that's what's going to be evaluated. Um, but, the main, you know, for us, we want to make sure that everything that you guys have done, you're taking credit for everything you've done, the credentials are named appropriately, and they, you know, they're, they're industry-recognized names when you're, when you're entering the credentials. And, you know, the assessments together, that's a big thing, especially with DH, um, DHS, with their education attainment, is making sure you have your assessments for TABE in the assessment tab. Um, other than that, you know, just continue to work with who you've got left and, you know, keep plugging away. And then, you know, if you have recommendations, we really want to – we're going to have to put a, get together a report at the end for FNS with specific questions. So if you guys have some things that you think, you know, were great that you think should be carried on in, a, you know, other programs, let us know. If there's things that didn't work well that you think if could be tweaked to do this and make it better, you know, we want to know that kind of things too because that's what they want to know. You know, what, what worked, what didn't work, and what needs to be potentially looked at, um, you know, down the road to make us those are their snappy and T program more effective. All right. I think um, I caught a few people in the participants list that I think I've gotten everybody. So if I don't have enough people on my list here for who was on the call, let me know. I saw Larry from Springfield Urban League. I saw Orlando from Leslie Bates. I saw Autumn from Antricon. I saw Lisa from Two Rivers. Um, oh, and one thing, Leslie Bates, um, I still do not have your um, cost workbook that has to go to the evaluation team. It's round 10 cost workbook. And they just requested that again. So if you can get that to me by the end of this week, I need to get that uploaded so they can get their um, work done on their end. So Orlando. And North Lawndale too, but they're not on. So I'll, I'll reach out to North Lawndale. All right, Orlan Orlando, you're gonna tell whoever's gotta do that. I'm assuming it's probably your fiscal person. Yes. Type in the chat pod. Let me know that you're listening. <laughs> if you don't see the chat pod, there's the three dots to the right-hand side of the bottom of your screen that says chat. Wait, I'm going to just open up your microphone. Orlando? You got it? <gasps> Where did he go? Did you scare him off? I think I did. <laughs> all right. And then I, I'll reach out to him. All right. And then Larry, you and I need to chat about your numbers. You've got some, you got some numbers <laughs> here. Eric, I do agree occasionally. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, everybody needs to keep track of those SNAP ineligible customers because once you mark them, then you also have to do completion status on them. So those numbers will just shift from one column to the other. So um, we, we need to keep these yellow rows clear, and all of these are yellow rows that you have to take care of. And I need these things done by, by, mon by Tuesday the 5th, because I've got to be at an agency on the 4th. And so I will be checking these and sending out my lovely emails. <laughs> And keep in mind, it's a new month for the 2151A, so all your numbers are going to go up again. As of Friday. Yeah, as of Friday. Eric, I'm, I'm mad at you. I am not scary. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
All right, so I think we might be done unless there's any other questions. Nope, just once again, I really appreciate all your work. It's I can't believe we're getting to the end of this. It's it's been a, a long journey, but it's been I think a good one and you know, for the most part with all of it. So and then put your on your calendar to the twenty second for now. We're working out all the details and um we'll get have something, you know, hopefully by Friday, by the end of the week, uh, like a save the time date type thing. All righty. All right. Um all right. Everybody up here, stay warm. It is, uh, let me pull up my temperature thing. It's minus 15 where I'm standing right now with a wind chill of minus 41. So, um, and this is the high for the day right now. <laughs> All right. Stay so, in, stay warm. That's right. All right. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.